Hey guys, today I want to talk about Naoya Inoue, including his right hand and his famous hook. I have a couple other bonus little clips at the end, however I'm going to discuss anatomy first. Now when it comes to punch mechanics, I've broken down the punch, virtually every punch, into four phases, including the load phase, explode phase, accelerate, and follow through. It's not just one robotic motion, it's a chain of events. I'm going to go into a little more detail here about how the body creates acceleration and what muscles and kinetic chains are used. Now there isn't just one kinetic chain. Some people refer to the kinetic chain as a singular, right? However, there are several throughout the body that work together to create power. All right, let's get into the anatomy. So here we see a picture of Nyoya about to throw a right hand against Nonito Donaire. When Nyoya throws a right, you'll see his hips rotate first. When he rotates his hips, it creates a stretch in his cross-body kinetic chains you see here, the spiral line, including the internal obliques in yellow and the external obliques in orange, and the front functional line, which you see here in blue, including the abs and the pec. Both lines connect with the arm. The spiral line includes the serratus anterior, which connects to the shoulder blade, and the front functional line connects with the pec, which of course goes into the arm. These muscles can then contract off of that stretch created by the hip rotation to power the torso into rotation as well. When the torso is rotating, it moves away from the arm, creating a stretch between the arm and the torso. Now you can actually stretch all these chains at once in the load phase, However, when the arm lines stretch, they can contract just like the torso does, so everything is now moving through the impact and follow through. So all these muscles are working together to power the punch and provide a solid foundation for weight transfer at impact and follow through. So to recap, the hips turn, the crossbody chains are stretched, then the crossbody chains are able to contract off that loaded elastic muscle energy to power the torso into rotation. This then stretches the arm lines, if they haven't been already stretched during the load phase, to contract off of that new stretch to power the arm into movement, coordinating the entire body, getting the entire body behind the punch to land with a very solid foundation at impact and follow through. It's a chain of events, remember, a chain of events, not like the linear style pivoting techniques that these guys are showing you. Now the hook is very similar. So to recap with the anatomy, hips rotate, create stretch in the crossbody kinetic chains. You see the spiral line here, along with the internal obliques in yellow, external obliques in orange, and then that goes up into the serratus in pink, along with the front functional line, including the abs and the pec. The spiral line connects with the shoulder and the front functional line connects with the pec. The arm lines connect the pec to the arm, so the hips rotate, create stretch in these chains, which then contract to rotate the torso. So the hips explode into rotation, creating torque, which creates accelerating movement through the torso and every joint until Naoya makes contact with his opponent. Now they always say you can't teach this, right? However, I think that's one of the most defeatist attitudes I've ever heard in sports. They don't tell you that you're either born throwing a ball or swinging a tennis racket, right, and you can't learn it. Well, it's the same thing. If you can throw a ball, you can learn how to throw a punch with power. This is all with the technical descriptions might sound kind of complicated. However, my program is very simple, and I can teach you how to do this. I'll explain more on that at the end of the video. Now let's get into the clips. First, I want to take a look at this right hand by Naoya against Jason Maloney. First, we'll watch it in a bit of slow motion, and then I'll go frame by frame. Look how short this is. It's quite amazing. All right, let's back it up. Now, I want you to take a look at how Naoya does not bring his fist back at all. He starts just moving with his pelvis, as you can see here, creating that torque. He doesn't bring his arm back at all. And even top boxers, you'll see him bring their arm back a little bit. His moves out a little bit to the side, but almost all the movement is forward. Just super quick and precise, great shot. Just a perfect counter. And Naoya is excellent with these 
fast counters. His timing, his reaction time is amazing. But you'll see, you know, I'll tell you what, it was really difficult to find good examples of Inoue creating torque. He's small and he's fast, and not a lot of views give you a good idea of how he creates torque. So you can see here, hips go forward, his torso is largely stationary, and then the torso, torso moves with his arm, and then it accelerates through the target. Excellent short right hand. Now let's take a look at this straight punch against Lewis Neri also. And it's a similar, similar thing. It's a very short punch, and you're going to see uh, Inoue create torque. And it's elusive on him. It took me a long time to find examples of this. Uh, however, I assure you that he is creating torque on all, virtually all of his big punches. And, you know, not all of them naturally, but you can see it here. So remember the four phases, load, explode, accelerate, follow through. So he's always really well balanced. However, he's lowering his center of gravity right here. What does he do before? Okay. Talking to the ref. He drops his center of gravity right here and immediately, look at that hip, pushes that hip forward. And just like the Jason Maloney example, he's, he's moving his fist here more. However, it's, it's real short. And you can see that torque, right? This is a, a good example, he's using, using a lot of it. But just lowers the center of gravity, explodes with a rotation. Now you're gonna see his torso and his arm moving accelerating, he lands, and then there's a follow-through. It's uh, not the most concussive punch. However, it's a good example of him creating torque. We'll watch it in kind of faster slow-mo here. So here's a bit more of a more violent punch than the last one. Jab comes out, he's moving back to front, center of gravity comes down, and immediately, in plyometric fashion, exploding from that lowered center of gravity. And you can see the torque in his hips. Look at his belt line, and you'll see almost like a skin fold appear because of his rotation there. So his hips rotate, take a look at that belt line, it's just a few frames, right there. And then everything comes behind that. So leading with the hips again, stretching the spiral line, like from the Artur Better Be a video. Stretching the spiral line. Arm comes out, the torso's moving away, and he's carrying that tension through his arm all the way until impact. And those chains are active at impact and follow through. Putting his whole body behind it. We'll watch it again. Jab comes out, weight moves from back to front, weight comes down, and immediately pushes his hips into rotation, pushes off the ground, torso follows. Arm is moving with the torso. Remember, as the torso moves away from the arm, it creates a stretch. And once you pick up that tension, you're able to continue it, continue it with the movement of the torso. So you're keeping tension between your arm and your torso, just like Inoue is doing, all the way through impact into the follow through. Let's take a look at this really big left hook from Inoue. Now, remember, when it comes to the anatomy, when he turns his hips like that, it stretches the crossbody chains. It stretches the spiral line and to extent the front functional line. So, He's rotating, look at him start rotating with his hips, right there. So that's like four frames of hip rotation before the torso starts moving. So that's a lot of stretch in those cross body chains, which then can contract off of that stretch to power the torso into rotation. And the arm lags behind, right? Remember the superficial front arm line between the pec and the arm? So when his torso's turning away from the arm, it's creating stretch between the arm and the torso, which he can then contract upon starting right there. 
and he lands with a with a it's a glancing blow, but it's a big shot. Right on Das Marinas' ribs, right where the liver is. So from the beginning again, you'll see for like three or four frames, he torques his hip. Right here, it starts moving forward, stretching those crossbody chains, picks up the torso, the torso contracts on it right, starting about here. And then the arm chain, the superficial front arm line is stretched and that picks up the contraction right about there and everything is accelerating until impact. And you can see he continues the trajectory of the punch basically through his opponent. And this puts him off balance, which actually these hooks tend to do, which is rather a pet peeve of mine. It happens because he's pushing off of his toes of his lead foot rather than a flat foot. And he's creating so much twisting from that elevated heel position that it throws him off balance. He's using rear hook mechanics to throw a lead hook, except that in a rear, rear hook, you have a lead leg that's going to take the weight transfer. Here he doesn't. He's, he's transferring his weight to an unsupported position. Here's a great example of Inoue throwing a short left hook that has a ton of power behind it, which just goes to show he doesn't have to use such torque that throws his body off balance in order to land with an effective blow. Sure, his liver shots are big and they end fights. However, a lot of them put him off balance. And now that I mention it, you're probably, when you go back and watch his fights, you'll probably notice this. But great example of a short left hook. Here's another left hook that he throws, which is, I think, uh, a little bit better because he stays on balance after, after this and he's able to throw another left hook that you're not able to do if you really torque on your front toes, right, with the pivoting style. Not only if you're doing the pivoting style, but if you're creating torque from your the toes on your lead foot, like we saw Inoue do a couple clips ago. He's never in a position to follow up. However, he is here. So you'll see him still create loads of torque, but really leading with his, his center there, torquing his entire body, creating a ton of torque. And look at that arm. It's, half, it's forced to snap forward. And it gets blocked, but huge punch if it landed. And uh, there's the second second hook to the head, body head. Here I'm going to show you an example of Naoya getting off balance after the left hook. And you can see his weight then goes forward, right? Because there's nothing to support his weight transfer. And he's got to give back on balance and he's not ready and gets popped by a jab. Maybe if Donaire was a few years younger, you know, in the middle of his prime, he would have been able to take more advantage of this. But it's something. And you can see here, Noya just dodging and slipping all these other punches, which is really great. Here's another view of it. And look at, he torques his body so much and has so much transfer but it's to an empty space. There's no support there. When he gets back on balance, he's got a fist in his face. I mean, he's able to, not that it was a huge shot, but he's able to recover and then slip all of Donaire's further punches, which is good. But, you know, something like this, eventually uh, it could catch up with him. Here's an example of Inoue throwing a counter that's just a little bit faster than Paul Butler's. And you can see Paul Butler in this fight, his guard is really high and it's it's very tight. Like he's carrying a lot of tension in his shoulders and inevitably this slows you down. Right? A, a relaxed muscle is able to contract more than a muscle that's tight. And it's gonna cause you, a, a tight muscle is gonna cause you to be slower. Even if he wants to relax his muscles, so then he can throw with a little bit more speed and more power, you know, rather than a tight muscle. It's going to take him time. And against someone like Inoue, you can't afford that. And so Inoue is always looking relaxed. Butler is quite tight here. 
And you'll see that Inoue just beats him to the punch, like by a couple tenths of a second, maybe one tenth of a second. But just really fast, good reaction time. This is right at the end of Paul's punch. Inoue gets hit a little bit, but certainly gets the better of the exchange. Because of Paul's tight guard, he's not really able to use proper mechanics here. And you can see that jab is virtually all powered by his tricep. I want to show you a kind of a cool example of Inoue's adaptability and counterpunching in his fight with Marlon Tapales. You can see Marlon here. He's, he's going to throw a straight left. And it, you know, it doesn't really land. But he's going to do it again in just a, a few seconds here. So here he does it again, and it lands a little bit right here. And now Naoya kind of gets a little bit smart to, to what Marlon's trying to do. And now Inoue senses that Marlon's going to try to do it again, and he intercepts him before Marlon can throw it. And, you know, just little by little, starts from the outside, uses his speed, uses his timing to slowly break his opponent down until he gets closer on the inside and then, and then ends him. All right, that's about it, guys. Thanks for watching. If you want to learn how you can punch with power using the four phases of the punch, check out my website, How to Punch Harder, and my program, The Power Punching Blueprint. The Power Punching Blueprint includes drills and exercises for every phase, which will change your muscle memory to use torque, to use acceleration in virtually every punch. Check that out today at howtopunchharder.com. That's it for now. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.